guys you're welcome thanks for clicking so two qualities needed to become a friend of Allah by Mufti Mek. now a question I have for myself and yourselves wouldn't we like to be friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imagine if Allah says that man is my friend Allahu Akbar imagine wouldn't you like to be a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala well, the answer is yes, indeed. We all want to be friends of Allah. So how to become a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in the Quran, Surah Yunus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says verses, and I'm sure a lot of us would know these verses by heart. Let's listen to them. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ لَهُمُ الْبُشْرَى فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah says, Behold, indeed, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no need for them to fear nor grieve, not at all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is verse number 62 of Surah Yunus and the two verses after that. They are the ones who believe and they have taqwa. That's all you need, two qualities. To become a friend of Allah, you need to be a believer and you need to have taqwa. In order to be, be a believer, you need to have two main qualities. You need to worship Allah alone without associating partners with him. And you need to follow the traditions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we have these two qualities, we are believers. On top of that, we need to have taqwa. Taqwa meaning be conscious of Allah. Create a barrier between you and the fire of Allah by engaging in commands and abstaining from prohibitions. That is called taqwa, piety. If you are a pious believer, you are a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, such people for them, there is good news, glad tidings in this world as well as the next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala befriend us and may he make us from those who are truly his friends. In the narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man aada li waliyan faqad aadhantuhu bil harb. Whoever has harmed a friend of mine, I have announced war against him. This is what Allah says. And this is why we say never ever harm people. You may never know who is the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know the people of Musa alayhi salam? What did they do? Fir'aun, the Pharaoh and his cronies, they lost every form of peace. Although they had lots of wealth and they had supreme authority on earth. And everything went. Do you know why? They harassed Musa alayhi salam. They troubled him. Not only did they disagree with the message, which was one thing, but they harmed them. They were killing. They were causing lots of chaos. And they called themselves gods. And they said, we will continue persecuting you forever and ever. And Allah says, no, there is a point of stopping when we will stop you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused Fir'aun to drown. You know that. The Pharaoh was drowned with all his cronies gone in a way that he would have never imagined he used to call himself the god and he died when he died people thought you know he is in the ocean here or the sea and he's been he swallowed by the water and drowned perhaps the water will spit him out and we're going to see he'll come alive again because that's what type of a tyrant he was so in order to put everyone's fears at rest allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Remove that body. Allah says on this day, we are going to take out that body of yours from the sea and preserve it so it can be a sign for those who are going to come after you. Today you go to Egypt, you see the mummies. They say Ramses II, Allah knows best who exactly it was. But if you see this lifeless person, he was powerful. They built the pyramids. They are the people who call themselves gods. Where are they? Allah says they were destroyed. Do you know why? Musa alayhi salam made a dua against them. He called out to Allah against them. And the reason why I make mention of this, when we harm the friends of Allah, they may allow us. They may give us a leeway. Oh Allah, guide this man. Oh Allah, open the doors of this person. Ya Allah, help them, guide them and so on. That's what a saint normally does. But there comes a time when even the prophets have called against their people because of a certain boiling point that they got to. You need to know this. It's in the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when Musa alayhi salam, who was a friend of Allah, 
He was a person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had spoken to, a great messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, when he was harmed by Fir'aun to a certain extent, and his people were harmed even more. He called out after a long time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know what he said? This is verse number 88 of the same surah, Surah Yunus. He says, رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ آتَيْتَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَأَهُ زِينَةً وَأَمْوَالًا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا O oh Allah, you have given Pharaoh and his people, you have given them beauty and wealth in this particular world. You've given them all the beautification of this world and you've given them wealth, you've given them authority. رَبَّنَا لِيُضِلُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِكَ O oh Allah, they are using all that they have in order to lead people astray from your path. O oh Allah, obliterate their wealth. Destroy it completely. Extinguish it. Delete it, Ya Allah. And harden their hearts now. Do you know what harden their hearts now means? Ya Allah, we want to see their punishment. We want to see their punishment, Ya Allah. Fala yu'minu, because they are never going to believe. These people will not believe. Hatta yarawul adab al alim. Until they see the severe punishment. When that dua came through, Allah says to Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun, may Allah peace be upon both of them. Qala qad ujibat da'watukum. Your dua has been responded to. That's what Allah says. The same applies to Nuh, Noah, may peace be upon him. We will come to the verses, inshallah, in the next surah. So the point being raised here is, Fir'aun was destroyed because of a dua of this messenger of Allah against him. Sometimes we are suffering lack of peace because we have harmed the friend of Allah. Maybe he raised his hands and he said, Ya Allah, destroy this man. May Allah not do that to us. It's not worth it to harm one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good heart. May we be people who are positive and may we be people who learn how to love one another and may we support one another. Amen. Oh, like you said, for you to be a good friend of God, you need to be close to Allah and you need to follow his teachings. Those are the two qualities of you being so close to God or having connection with God or being the friend of Allah. You must be close to him you must acknowledge that he is God. You must reference him. You must take him as your, your, the one and only true God. Then after that, you need to study his word. Study your Quran. You know, from there you get to know more about God. Those two, are, those two things are very, very important. From there you see how doors will be opening for you. You see the great and mighty things that will be happening in your life. You see how, you know, You'll be maturing in faith. You'll be growing spiritually. And that's, the, that's what God wants from us. He wants us to give him the due respect that he deserves. So for you to, to, for you to know God, for you to get connected to God, first acknowledge him, be close to him, and know about his teachings. And he spoke a lot about, you know, how to worship him, you know, pray to God, you know, these things are required for you to be to be a friend of Allah. And that was a beautiful. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.